I cannot stress enough the importance of the information you're about to hear, so tune in here. Joining me to discuss this is breast surgeon Dr. Leslie Taylor, genetic specialist Dr. Aura Gordon, and our very own Wendy Brokaw. She is a producer on our show. Wendy, the story from Juliana Rancic is something that hits very close to home for you. Tell us why. Um, because I was faced with the choice of, um, you know, having found out that I carry this genetic mutation and knowing very well that I could end up with breast cancer and not having had it, but making what some people would say is a radical decision to have a double mastectomy. So what she's doing, I was faced with as well, although I didn't have cancer when I you know, found out I had this gene. You just had the genetic potential for it and were not wanting to, to take on that risk any further. Well, I found out that I had, I personally had an 87% risk of breast cancer. Dr. Gordon, tell us about that. So the BRCA gene, BRCA1, BRCA2, help people understand that. Who should be most concerned about it and what, are the peop what people like Wendy might take uh, preventative action? So overall, about 10% of all breast cancers are felt to be hereditary, but another 20 to 30% have a familial risk so even if we can't identify a single gene, that those people may have increased risk as well. For BRCA1 and BRCA2, there are certain ethnic groups that are in higher risk. There are certain risk factors, family history being the most important of those. So the, somebody that would definitely want to look into this more aggressively would be a BRCA1 with Ashkenazi Jew background with a family member with ovarian, colon, or breast cancer. Would that be right? Right. So BRCA... That would be somebody who would really want to look into this. Both uh, BRCA1 and BRCA2. So sure. anybody who is of Eastern European Jewish background, anybody who has a family history of early onset breast cancer. Should everybody who has a family history of ovarian or breast cancer that is a female uh, first degree relative be getting this genetic testing? I think everybody should have that discussion. Absolutely. Because there's a lot that comes with the information. Right. And it's, they should, it's something they should discuss not just with their primary doctor, but with a geneticist? Well, I You prefer that. <laughs> life-saving information. Yes. I mean, for me, a lot of people find out they're BRCA positive and they are upset about it. And I am so grateful to have this information. This is something that is saving my life. I'm not going to get that phone call that I have breast cancer. You prevented it. I prevented it. And, and Dr. Taylor, these days people think about mastectomy as a disfiguring procedure. Nowadays, people can end up, come, come away from their initial surgery with reconstructed breasts. Yes, absolutely. Um, there's immediate reconstruction options and there's delayed reconstruction options. Um, there are options to have silicone or saline implants or even having fat um, injected and, to and the, make the cosmetic symmetry. outcomes are really remarkable. The cosmetic remarkable. outcomes are amazing. Wendy was bragging about it. Well, I have to say that they are not real, but they are spectacular. <laughs> <laughs> and they'll so stay that way. <laughs> they will. They'll be perky forever and there is some silver linings in it. And I mean, I don't want to sugarcoat it. I mean, it wasn't an easy procedure, but it was, it's, you know, it's behind me. It's a part of my history, but it doesn't define me. And right. life goes on. And, and now it's something that you have to sort of contemplate in your children. You have to decide when to test, who to test. That I same con conversation goes on in the next generation. Absolutely. Dr. Taylor, what about people who are not at special genetic risk? What should, the, what should every woman do in terms of minimizing not just their risk, but also increasing their probability of screening early? Well, one is, first and foremost is to be informed and to do a self-breast examination, certainly one week after their periods, um, to notice any new lumps or bumps. Um, and that's just for the general population. If there's a family pattern, then being aware of that is certainly important. Um, although we have BRCA1 and 2 mutations that can be detected, they're certainly up to BRCA1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, even new founder mutations that are being detected. And so it's a definite um, thing to be aware of, even if there isn't a known genetic um, how about Mutation. mammograms? That's a little bit of a moving target. What age should women have their first mammogram? Uh, age 40, the American 40. Cancer Society. Geneticists agree with that, that too? 40 or 10 years earlier than the earliest cancer in your family. Okay. And MRI is a new imaging modality, which is really great for young women who are at higher risk. Yeah, that has but to do with But not for everybody. Not enough. for everybody. Everyone's That's running around getting MRIs correct. today. We're, they, if you, the, the idea here is if you get an MRI unnecessarily, you're going to end up with unnecessary surgeries. 
So, right? Yes, that's possible. So one thing to be really aware of is the sensitivity of mammography. So the denser the breast, the less sensitive mammography So the, is. the very dense breast, if the, if the mammographer comes back with this is a dense breast, you might at least discuss an MRI. How about the new uh, this, uh, sonographic procedures? Any of those that are yes. somebody should consider? We, we um, use all of those high breast for high risk. We use whole breast ultrasound. But how about the non-at-risk? Does the average person say who has a dense breast? With a dense breast, adding ultrasound is a very nice addition.